Hello, and welcome to episode zero of a new Let's Play, Dawn of Man. This game was suggested by the True King, who's always been commenting on our Austria videos. So thanks for that suggestion. We're going to try it out, and we're going to start right from the beginning. I'll take you guys along with me in the tutorial. We'll get started playing the game proper in episode one. So if you are familiar with the game already, feel free to skip. You won't hurt my feelings. Anyway, let's go ahead and dive right in. So from what I've gathered, this is a prehistoric survival game at first, and then it kind of progresses you through the uh, rest of the ages up to the Iron Age. And there's a lot of micromanagement type things similar to how Age of Empires and similar games may work. So let's go ahead and check this out. Start out, we've got looks like seven people. Okay, here we go. In the game, you control a band of ancient humans striving for survival. Tutorial explains the basics, in-game help, etc. Okay, cool. We've got a couple huts. Okay, FPS style camera controls, WASD, Q and E. Okay, mouse wheel zoom. All right. Can I use the center mouse button to look around? I can, but there's no, there's no tilt. Hmm. Okay, that might be annoying. Oh, it wants me to actually rotate. There we go. All right. Pivot the camera around the point. Rotating and panning. Okay, customize keys. Cool. All right, so fishing. People will need a constant supply of food to stay alive. One of the more predictable sources of food is fish from rivers and lakes. So we're going to send people to fish, it looks like. Uh, click the river, then click on the fish button. Oh, it takes us over here. That's useful. All right, okay, so this is like a predefined resource area, it looks like. Fish. All right, so in general, you can assign tasks to your people by selecting objects like trees, rivers, animals, structures, etc., then choosing one of the options in the selection panel. All right, so this person is going to be fishing, looks like. Next, you should be gathering some basic construction and crafting materials like sticks and flint. Okay, no, those are stones. Okay, these are these are sticks, all right. That's flint. What is this? Put an ore. Iron ore. Okay, that's cool. All right. Sticks. Gather. And then flint. Gather as well. Now, if this is going to be automated so I don't have to do this every time, that would be fantastic. All right. So, oh, okay, good. There's a time skip. So we have one times, two times, three times. No, four times and eight times looks like. Is there anything past that? No. Okay, well, that's fine. So we'll wait for them to gather. Looks like they've just taken into their huts. Uh, I'm assuming there's going to be some sort of warehouse or other building we can build. Well done. You now know how to assign tasks to your people. This is a good way of micromanaging them. We like micromanaging. If you watch my Ostrov Let's Play, you are going to know very much about my micromanaging habits. All right, so too much micromanagement is tedious and inefficient. Correct. Work areas are a way to give general commands to your settlement that people will perform continuously. You can specify location, resource limit, and the max number of people. Okay. So, fish work area. Is it going to tell me? Okay, there we go. Work area. Sticks. Okay, so we can expand or contract with... Okay. Oh, okay, and there's these little uh, arrows that show up above where sticks are. So let's go ahead and put that right there. Okay. Flint. Okay. There's one here. There's, oh, there's three over here. Okay. So we can go ahead and shrink this a little bit. Put that right there. Fish. All right. Oh, okay. So there's one here, one here, one here. Oh, this tutorial map is a lot bigger than I would have. Uh, wow. Okay. You think for the tutorial they'd kind of lock you in someplace, but that uh, there's quite a lot over here. So we can actually put this. Won't let us put it in the river. All right, fair enough. We'll put that one there. Harvest wild plants. What kind of wild plants do we have? We got looks like berries. A uh, couple types of berries. Okay. Let's keep it pretty close to where we're already at right now. I think we can be fine just doing that. Okay, cool. By default, only one person at a time will go to any given work area, but you can increase this if required. So I think that's what we're going to have to do. Yep, okay. So it wants three workers in the gather sticks and two workers in the obtain flint. So that's two of those. And then 
Click here, click that up to three. All right, very good. Okay, wait for your people to get three units. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and fast forward just a little bit. Let's see, okay, I wanted to actually watch this guy do this. Okay, well done, your people now continuously gather resources until the limit is reached. Berries can only be gathered in summer, other resources in the game can only be gathered in a particular season. Okay. So what does it look like? Oh, come on, let me let me pan this. All right. Hunting tools, crafter. So that must be some sort of building. I want to watch this guy gather stuff real quick, because that's what we do. We look at little details. Bankal, I guess is how you would pronounce that. Oh, okay. So they have a system like the Sims kind of going on here where you have different metrics. Temperature, hydration, nutrition, morale, rest, stamina. Okay, that's cool. All right, so nothing of supreme interest right there. That is pretty cool to watch, though. All right, let's go ahead and build a crafter production. Okay. Uh, I'm assuming the arrows are where people will go in and out. So we'll go ahead and just put that right there. And they're going to build it. So, of course, we're going to speed that up a little bit. Oh, they talk. Okay. Very cool. Building pretty speedily. That log just came out of nowhere. Hmm, interesting. All right. Uh, uh, knowledge. Oh, okay. Uh, it's going to tell us about that later, but it looks like there's some sort of knowledge you gain by doing things for the first time. That's cool. Uh, craft tools, select the crafter, then click on a tool recipe. Okay. We'll go in here. Okay, left click to produce one item, right click to toggle continuous production. That's useful. Okay, so what we'll, we'll do the order they want them to do. So we have three of each. All right, number four again. We're going to go turbo speed. All right, so somebody actually sits down and starts working on stuff. Oh, you can't, you can't see them actually do anything. That's, that's too bad. Uh, that's interesting. Okay, so we have... Q is about halfway done. Okay, that's cool. I think we probably at some point after the tutorial will be pulling more than one of these at a time, but that's fine. That should be just about done. Okay, so they're done. Well done. We now have all the tools we need to go hunting. Okay, that seems dangerous. All right, hunting is tricky business in the Stone Age. No kidding. Killing a large animal with sticks and stones was no easy feat. Yeah, I wouldn't want to try it. Uh, use primal. Whoa, oh, do we have do we have like some sort of supervision? Easy prey highlighted in green. Large animals, carnivores, until you have the right tools, manpower. All right, so we're gonna press tab. Oh, that's cool. Oh, what what was that? Was that Assassin's Creed, where you had a uh, the supercharged hearing or observation or something? I think that that might have been what. It, oh, that's so cool. I love that. So we have, uh, if we scroll out, that's a tree. That's not prey. Hmm. All right, well, um, okay, so we've got, looks like a, oh, donkey. Uh, reindeer, reindeer. Anybody over here? Strawberry. Didn't know Peppa Pig was in here. Um, reindeer, anybody else besides donkeys and reindeers? Mm, okay, our our people are blue. Oh, good, more names for me to butcher because I don't know how to pronounce them. All right, that's fine. Uh, oh, look at this dude. All right, this is a mammoth. Uh, he's red, so we're not going to mess with him. Megalos Megaloceros? Megal Megal Megaloceros? I don't know. I'm not a ancient human history buff, so uh, that's probably a very incorrect pronunciation. So let's go ahead and go for uh, our little donkey here. Okay, hunt. Okay. Wait for the people to hunt the animal. All right. Actually, I want to watch them do this. I want to see how they're going to go about doing this. So our donkey is right here. So I think what they're going to do... Yep, okay, so this guy is... Okay, this is just like going around an ostrich. Oh, pears. Okay. Okay, so they're kind of stalking this thing. Interesting. Are they going to just like chuck spears at it and uh, and run or what? Oh, it's, okay. That's quite literally what it was. All right. 
Once the animal has been hunted, your people will butcher it and bring it the resources to camp. Hunting in this manner, your people will decide how many of them to send based on the difficulty of the prey. Okay. All right. Micromanagement, selecting a few people, then right clicking. Oh, okay, so it is like the uh, in Age of Empires where you could drag to select entire groups of units and attack or build something. Okay, that's cool. Move people around, assign them to a task. Especially useful for hunting. Okay. But what's he what's he doing with this? So is he gonna butcher the animal? Is he gonna just gather some uh That's a big donkey. I thought they were usually smaller than that. Hmm. Extractable okay, so this is just like Age of Empires, it'll tell you how many uh how many food you can get out of it. Skin and bones. Vorigvek will leave him to uh do the dirty work. So we need to find two people to hunt. Ideally adults, you look like a strong individual. Viri, okay. And Morel, probably butchering the pronunciation there. All right, so we're gonna take these two ladies and we're gonna come up here and we're gonna hunt this uh, reindeer. I think right click on him, yes. Well done, you can check out the help in the game for more detailed instructions, okay. We'll probably be doing that. What are, oh, what is that guy? Skins. All right, we'll get to that in a second. What is this? Wooly Rhino. Oh, I can't go into a uh, primal mode. Oh, that's disappointing. I want to see what kind of challenge rating this guy is. All right, so oh, this guy's going far off. Okay, so these two, they're gonna do their thing. Um, so we gotta do skin dryers production. Skin dryer. Um, let's go ahead and put these right by the fire here. Two. Yeah, let's build a third. Why not? All right? So I think, is this automatically... Okay, well, they have to build it, and then I think it automatically gets used. Like woodpile, campfire... Okay. Where's our ladies that are hunting over here? Okay. Wow, they're going all over the place. Why are they... Okay, this is a little further than I wanted to go. But, so they're, they're going to sneak up on this guy right here. Oh, that was quick. One spear. All right, so we're, we're getting more knowledge. At some point, I think it's going to probably ask us to do tech tree research or something. Anyway, they're going to do that thing. Let's come back over here. Okay, they're still drying two skins, so they're going to have to actually build that. That might take a little bit of time. Z, are you tired? Is that why it says Z? Oh, you are tired. Okay. All right, 67% balanced. Oh, that's interesting. Maybe it'll explain that later. Let's see exactly what that's about. 82 degrees Fahrenheit, summer. I hope they're gathering these berries. Woodpile, they got food stored up. Cured meat, flint, wooden spear, berries. Okay. So I think, I don't know, there's no granaries or anything in this game from what I've seen. Got a wood pile. It kind of it railroads you in the tutorial, of course, so we won't find out quite yet. Uh, always keep a stock of dry skins as they are a fundamental building and crafting material. All right. Well enough. In the game, you earn knowledge points. Here we go. Knowledge points when doing certain actions, hunting new animals, gathering new resources, reaching certain population levels. Research new techs. Okay. Food drying tech unlocks the food dryer, which allows you to process raw meat, raw fish into cured meat, and dry fish. Last a lot longer and can be stored for winter. Okay. Uh, open the text panel by using menu button or pressing F7. Okay, so we can click here. Ah, uh, okay, this is kind of like civilization, actually, with the different trees and things that intersect into each other. Let's go ahead and do food drying. Five knowledge. And then that's going to lead to grain processing and uh the food dryer building okay so that's done then uh once we move into one of these then we'll advance eras oh that's really cool actually all right so we need to build a food dryer oh storage tent first i guess uh let's rotate um yeah we'll put that there okay food dryers under production uh, we can put that right there. Okay. And then we need to wait for them to produce cured meat. Of course, they're going to have to build this thing. 
All right, very interesting. Okay, this is like some sort of like a jungle gym lattice or something. Okay, so okay, so they take the stretched out skins and build over a frame. I wonder if it tells us. I don't know. Maybe that's looking a little bit too much. In, oh, look at this! If I can get the game to actually stay in one spot, it's like actual fish. That's a big fish. So you got fish and meat. Cool. So this will just automatically produce food, I suppose, and get stored in there. Yeah, I guess they just decide. So we don't have to decide what gets stored where, which I think, which seems to be good. That is a very useful thing. So, oh, this is up to, okay, it was up to 83. I don't know if higher is better or lower is better. Maybe it'll tell us at some point. Okay, so we have a capacity of six. We have a population of seven. I'm assuming each of these is a capacity of three. Yes, prestige one. It's a it's a tent. Would that not be prestige zero? I don't know. Maybe in the uh, ancient times that was fine. Well done. Remember to always dry your food and keep it in a storage structure to reserve it for as long as possible. Okay, makes sense. Continuous production. There we go. Okay, we saw that earlier. We can right click a recipe to toggle continuous production until the resource limit is reached. Okay, so we'll do right click all of these. So I think I thought I already did that. Okay. We'll now continuously produce the tools until the resource limit is reached. Okay. If everyone is well fed and taken care of, your settlement will reach a high level of welfare and prestige and more people will want to join it. For new people to join the village, you have to build enough residence buildings to accommodate the new population, otherwise they will not come. Makes sense. You have to have people uh, somewhere to live. Okay, residences. Oh, look at all this. Goat domestication. Okay, well, that's probably way later. Tents. Okay, let's go ahead and put one right in the middle here next to the rest of them. Okay, we have to build one more. Mm, yeah, let's try that. Okay, so that way they'll kind of all be in the same area. All right, let's uh, fast forward here. Let's see what it does. They're just going to be building here. I wish the game would allow you to tilt the camera. That would be nice. Okay, so now we have a capacity of 9. Okay, they're, they're going to build this. That'll get us to 12. Really interesting construction. I've always thought it was kind of cool to have the frame and just cover it with the skins. Oh, yeah, me too. Ho ho. This guy kind of looks like a. What is it? The the actor who played Moses in the uh, the Ten Commandments movie from like the 60s with the big beard like that. Uh, new humans will now join your settlement. Note that your settlement can also grow when your people reproduce. Mm, yeah, well, that tends to happen. Uh, this plays a more important role when you reach larger populations. Larger number of births makes sense. Okay, so now I know the basics on how to run a settlement. Now that there are quite a few other mechanics in the game that are not explained here. Get more info from the loading screen, hence UI tooltips are the end game help menu. So is that the end of the tutorial? Well, I guess it is. Okay, well. Hopefully that was an interesting little look at how this game kind of plops you into the world. We will go right on into episode one in the next video. But thanks for joining me. Hopefully you found that interesting and engaging. And if not, then we'll get to the good stuff in the next episode. But thank you regardless for joining. If you're interested, I also have an, a Let's Play of Austria, which is a Ukrainian city building management simulator set in the 18th century. So feel free to check that out. There will be a link in the end cards. But yeah, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you in the next one.